Okay, we have here today another integral on the board. We've got the integral from zero to pi, sine to the eighth x, cos to the sixth x, dx. Okay, now the first thing I noticed, we could probably do like straightforward methods because we just have trig integrals and we could do some stuff to reduce the powers. We could use like the reduction formula on this. So we could do some straightforward methods on this, but actually what I wanted to do instead was I just want to focus on this upper bound pi. What I wanted to try to do is see if I can reduce this bound. If I can get this to pi over two, I think that's going to be easier to deal with. So we have this property of the definite integral over here to the right where it's set up like kind of what we have here where the 2a value, the 2a value on our integral is just going to be pi. What this allows us to do is split the upper bound in half. So this would become, this here would become pi over two. We just need to bring a two out front. But we have this condition we need to satisfy that f of 2a minus x is going to be equal to f of x. So for our problem specifically, again, with this being 2a, we want to show that f of pi minus x is the same thing as f of x. So first what I can do is calculate it for sine. So sine of pi minus x, that's just going to be sine of x. And for, we have our other term cosine, cosine pi minus x is going to be just cosine x. Sorry, this is actually minus cosine x. But when we raise this to the eighth power and this to the sixth power, this just becomes sine 8x. And this one, when we raise this to an even power, the minus sign goes away. And so what we have here is exactly what we have in our integral. So this condition is true. So we can use this property down here. Now this right here isn't exactly the right form to use the beta function. Okay, now we have our formula for the beta function over here to the right. We're in exactly the right form. We got our bounds. We even have the two up front that we have right here. Not that we really, we could find it anyway, but we've got the two up front. And we just have the exponents on sine and cosine. We just need to find this z1 and z2 value in order to express this in terms of the gamma function. So first on the exponent for the sine, we're saying this exponent is eight and it's gonna be equal to two Z1 minus one. Well then just solving for Z1, this is gonna be two Z1 equal to nine. Then we can divide by two and we find Z1 equals nine over two. And then for this exponent on the six, we just need to find our Z2 value over here. So we have another equation, we'll say two Z2 minus one equals six. Solving for z2, we just get z2 is going to be equal to 7 halves. Okay, so now that we have our z1 and z2 value, this value and this value, we have everything we need to express this and find a solution in terms of the gamma function. So just using this formula over here, we're saying our integral, this is going to become now gamma of z1, which is 9 halves, gamma of z2, which is 7 halves, over gamma of the sum of these, which is going to be gamma of 16 halves, or just gamma of 8. But now from here, what we can do is use this formula for the gamma function and use it to express it in terms of factorials. And for gamma of n, we can write this as n minus one factorial. Usually we do this when n is an integer. So we have that in the denominator here. So for gamma of eight, we can write this as just seven factorial. And we have another formula we can use here. We can use gamma of n plus one is gonna be equal to n times gamma of n. Really, this is the same thing as this, but it's just another way to reduce this. So looking at gamma of 9 halves, what we can do is we can rewrite this using this as subtracting 1. We can write this as 7 halves times gamma of 7 halves. But then we can just repeat this over and over again. So we can write this for gamma of 7 halves. I can write this as 5 halves times gamma of 5 halves. And we can just do this again over here. So rewriting again, it's going to take a few iterations. So for gamma of 5 halves, I can write this as 3 halves, gamma of 3 halves. But then finally, let's see if I have enough space here. I can write this as seven times five times three times one. Just putting this all together. And then for gamma three halves, I'm writing as one half times gamma of one half. And so let's take this and plug it back in for gamma of nine halves, but I'm gonna try to consolidate it a little bit. So for seven times five, so for this numerator, I write it as seven times five times three. And then for this denominator, I write it as two to the fourth times gamma of one half. And so for gamma of 7 halves, we calculate it exactly the same way. And we actually have it right here because we did it starting right there. So for our value of gamma of 7 halves, we're going to have just 5 times 3 over 2 cubed. And again, we're going to have gamma of 1 half at the end. And now in order to finish it off, I just want to get some simplification here. Now one thing for gamma of 1 halves, we typically just remember a value. So gamma of 1 halves is a known value. This is actually just the same thing as square root of pi. So putting this together here, we have square root of pi. Here we have square root of pi. We multiply it together and I'll write this as a pi on the end. So for two to the fourth times two to the third, I'll put those together as two to the seventh and bring it into the denominator. And I'm actually gonna write out this seven factorial as seven times six times five, four, three, two. 
I'm just doing that so I can get some cancellation here when I write out these other terms. So we have seven times five times three times five times three. And then that's gonna allow me to cancel sevens here, fives here, threes here, and I'll cancel three with six to give me another two here. So just looking at what we have left, we're gonna have five times pi. Here we're gonna have two to the seventh, but this I can put all together as 16 or two to the fourth. So two to the fourth times two to the seventh gives me two to the 11th. But two to the 11th is 2048. So for my final solution, we just get five pi over 2048. Okay, so there you have it. Thought it was an interesting integral using the beta function. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.